Hi guys, Paul here, and we're going to run through the basic layout of the NACE32 board and the sort of wiring that we're using and how we go about getting telemetry back to the Tyrannus radio. So firstly, we've got two boards here. This one is one from Abusemark and basically from Japan, and this one is the Hobby King version. So both look pretty much the same, the layouts are pretty much identical other than a couple of components. but We'll run through the basic layout. Now, the outside of the board, all these pins on the outside, and over here as you can see, and out there, are all going to be negative, so keep that in mind. Okay, so this will represent motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. So we'll need to solder in some pin headers for that, and we'll also need to solder in some pin headers for this region also, which is where we get our telemetry and run our buzzer, etc. In my current configuration layout, I'm running one, two, three, four of these, and they're connected to my ESCs, and only one of the ESCs is providing power back to the board. On the other ones, I've actually cut the positive lead uh, on the actual ESC. So only one of them is actually connected to the board, and that's how it's providing power to the board. Now, over on this side, I'm only using the, these three pads, one, two, and three. And they go straight to the PPM on my D4R2 receiver. And I don't actually solder in any pin headers on this. I'm just going to solder directly to the board. And over here in this region here, we're going to run three connections. Now keep in mind the negative is on the outside. So the first one is going to be to your battery. And this will go to your power distribution. And this will allow the NAS32 to monitor the power level on your battery. The second one will be a buzzer. Now I'm using the same buzzer that's in a KK2 board. That's what we had lying around here. So I'm using those buzzers. And once again, you've got your negative and you've got your positive up here. And finally, this will go to your D4R2 receiver and you've got your negative and this will be your, um, your green wire will actually connect to this from the D4R2 receiver. So this is the uh, basic wiring as in the um, NACE32 connected to my uh, CGX250. So what we've got firstly is um, these are my connectors that go to my PPM out from the D4R2 receiver. And here you can see the connection into the D4R2. And then we also have, I'm not sure how well you're going to see this. We also have our four ESCs connected here and only one of these is supplying power to the NAS32. And finally, uh, towards the rear here, what you can see is the first servo connector is going straight to my power distribution board. The second one is actually going to my buzzer. And finally, this last one is actually going also to my D4R2 receiver, and it's connecting to um, the black and the green wire that comes out of the receiver and that will actually send the telemetry back to the D4R2, which will in turn send it back to the Tyrannus radio. So that's the basic wiring inside the quadcopter. So here we have the NAS32 Acro board, along with the pin headers and also a servo lead. Now this is the Hobby King uh, NAS32 board that I spoke about earlier on, and this is all completely soldered up, and this is the sort of finish that we're actually after. Just something nice and neat, nice clean solder joints that look nice and wet. So what we need to do now is basically insert the pin headers into the PCB board. Now the pin headers I've got come in, there are lots of, there's, there's six pin headers. So there's four groups of these that I've got to solder in. So um, what I'm going to do first is put them in place. And let's get these guys in here. And once they're in place, what I want to do is carefully turn this over and place it face down onto the board. You just got to be careful that you don't actually drop any out of there if you can and just position it in place. And then what you want to do is actually hold the PCB down with something. And here I'm using my um, solder assistant. It's just this thing that's got two alligator clips on it and just helps hold wires, etc. So once you've got that in place, the next thing you want to do is solder in place at least one pin from each one of those pin headers. And the reason for that is we don't want to solder the whole lot in place just yet. And the reason being that in case you haven't got it seated down properly, 
then it could become an issue desoldering a whole heap of joints. Where if it's if it's only one solder joint, you can easily push it down with your finger and re wet the re melt the solder and then um, reseat the actual pin headers. So that's a theory there. So once you've actually got each one of them soldered up, uh, what you want to do is flip the board over and just confirm that you've got these pin, head pin headers sitting nice and neatly into the PCB board, nice and flat, and they're hard up against the PCB like that. So once you know they're pretty much in place and they look fine, the next step is really basically put it back down in position again, use something to hold it down, and once you've actually held the board down, what you want to do is solder in each one of them. There's no specific sequence you need to go through. Um, it's just a matter of getting nice, clean, wet joints. Now over here, as you can see, I'm using a very, very fine tip soldering iron, and actually that soldering iron should have been cleaned there. It's actually quite awkward trying to do this with a camera right over the PCB board, so I'm sort of trying to work around it. So hence, I look a little bit awkward the way I'm doing it, but this, you're watching this in real time, and this is the speed at which you would actually solder. As you can see, I've wet the actual soldering iron a bit there just to get better heat transfer. So the, se the theory is actually pretty simple. What you want to do is heat the actual surface, then apply the actual... This is slowed down now. So what I'm doing is heating the surface, and I dab just a touch of solder onto the actual soldering iron, and that will allow the heat to transfer to the pin and also the pad. And once it's actually transferred, it's heated up, as you can see, I can apply solder to it, and it's pretty much good to go. And the rest of it, I'm going to solder up now in real time, so we see exactly how it is that I'm doing it. So the process is actually pretty quick. So we'll go through and solder the rest of these guys up. I'll let you watch a few more in real time. And then what we'll do is speed this video up. So that's pretty much it. It's all soldered up and we're pretty much good to go. All we need to do now is flip the board over. And then once we've got it flipped over, we need to tin these three pads for the PPM. And the same process exactly. A little bit of solder, then apply more solder once you get good heat transfer. And that's pretty much good to go. Then it's just a matter of soldering in place the servo connector. And the way that's done, keep in mind too, I've actually tinned these already. It's already these wires are already pre-tinned, so keep that in mind. I'm not just um, melting them straight into the solder. So that's pretty much it. It's all soldered in place and the board is pretty much good to go, ready to go into your multi-rotor. And as you can see, we've got nice clean solder joints underneath and that's pretty much what we're after. And we'll continue on with part two in the next video. Anyway, thanks for taking time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed that and catch you guys later.